Ryan with Miss Talk Geek here, and tonight, because uh, it is nighttime currently while this is being uh, videoed, uh, we're looking at the rebuild of the BitX40. Now, I know I've covered this in another video, but this is going to be the beginning of a series that are dedicated to rebuilding this radio. And so I just want to give a quick overview of uh, what the goals are. And if you could, if this looks inspired by uh, Charlie's at L2 CTM, that's because it is. <laughs> this the the style of doing the video. In fact, and we'll talk about him in a minute here. But this is the BitX40 module. It's one of the originals uh, pre Arduino. Um, you can see the VFOs fully populated and everything. Well, it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can see it's missing some parts. If you're not familiar with the uh, BitX40, just a quick tour. This is where the PA section used to be. This is where the bandpass filter used to be. This is where the VFO used to be. Here's the diode ring mixer. Here's the crystal filter. Here's the uh, IF uh, preamp or amp here uh, the, for the crystal oscillator for the interme intermediate frequency or BFO. And here's the mic preamp. And here's the audio amp. And I think that's all the audio amp there. Um, the it's, it's called the Bitex or bidirectional transmitter because uh, the whole radio is bidirectional. Uh, the signal comes in, goes through this amplifier, through the uh, diode ring mixer, which injects the IF into it, and or the, actually the VFO into it, and then that comes through here, and blah 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 blah. You have a signal, um, and then the other way around, the and that goes to the audio amplifier, which goes out to the speaker. On the other hand, the microphone power the when you're transmitting the uh, microphone is powered rather than the audio amplifier. Uh, the mic amplifier is is powered rather than the audio amplifier is what I mean. And that signal goes out to uh, this transformer and gets mis mixed with the IF and gets turned into uh, a dual sideband signal, which goes to the crystal filter, which turns it into a single sideband signal, which gets amplified, then gets mixed with the VFO, which goes out to which gets amplified again, which goes out to the bandpass filter, then goes to the PA and gets goes through the low pass filter, which is also gone, and then goes out to the world. All that stuff is gone except for these uh, these uh, bidirectional amplifiers and uh, the audio and uh, microphone amplifiers and the relays. So the relays control uh, both the power to these transformers, or not, I'm sorry, power to these amplifiers, which are bi-directional. When you power this side or this side of the uh, uh, amplifier, then it, 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 there goes my thing, uh, then it controls which direction it, it amplifies signal in. That's really it. So the whole point, and, that's, and you can read more about that, um, W7ZOI Wes Hayward has a fantastic write-up about these transformer, or I keep calling them transformers, about these amplifiers uh, on his website. And uh, in fact, I'll put a link below. When I was reading that, I learned that these are not 50 ohm um, amplifiers. They are roughly 170 ohm. So that would explain why in the past I had problems with the um, 50 ohm QRP Labs bandpass filters really not playing well. And I could not understand why. Well, now I understand. And so you also notice that the crystal here that used to be a 12, 12 megahertz crystal for the um, BFO or IF intermediate frequency, uh, that's gone. That was, and then we've also got the whole, uh, the uh, VFO is gone. Yes, now it's my, <laughs> my, my DVM is off now. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> um, these are all being supplied by a DDS, in this case, an SI5351, which I had, I had custom made my own little VFO with the Arduino Uno, and it worked fine. But um, I blew a, I, I kind of blew it up. Uh, I took, I repurposed it for another project and blew it up. So I've got another one, another Arduino uh, Nano that we're going to use. We're also gonna, going to be using uh, the QRP Labs um, uh, SI5351 uh, kit. Uh, instead of the Adafruit, which people seem to love, but I I would prefer to order from QRP Labs if I can, support the small guy. Um, 
I mean, Hans is somebody we all love, right? So why not support a fellow Ham? And uh, that that will be placed somewhere in here, likely. And then um, what we've got here is a 3 dB pad. So I've repurposed these capacitor um, uh, pad mounts, I guess you could call them. This is where originally where some uh, trimmer capacitors went. Um, I've they're wired in just perfect for a 3 dB pad, and so that's what I've done here with these uh, resistors. So the uh, SI5351 output clock zero and clock one, or however I just determined to do it. Um, I've also <laughs> I've also reused the uh, uh, PCB holes here in order to uh, make those connections so that everything works. It, it it actually works out really really well because before I was kind of hot gluing it and just trying to make it not kind of trying to make it work, but by reengineering it it actually is these are nice and this one especially is in there really good the previous one was always like this but this one i was having a hard time with that that's why this trace over here is broken and uh, uh it just connects beautifully to the pad so uh, that works out really well in fact i think this one the pad connects directly to it this resistor right here connects directly to it so that works out uh, quite well so there's several several goals here. Uh, the first is we're going to get rid of the 12 megahertz um, crystal filter and replace it with an 11.0592 crystal filter. The reason for that is that the 12 megahertz crystal filter or the 12 megahertz IF rather um, it, it it oscillates. Uh, I think it beats against the uh, or interacts, however, with the 16 megahertz Arduino. Uh, uh, crystal. So we need to make that not happen. So that's why actually that's one of the main reasons Farhan went to an 110592 on the uh, microbit X was to fix that problem. And uh, it creates a really strong birdie at 7.2 megahertz to the point where 7.2 megahertz is unusable for the about, about three kilohertz, um, you know, 1.5 kilohertz above and below it. So changing that will fix this. Then we've got to transform this 170 ohms roughly into about 50 ohms. So we're going to use another one of these um, trifiler transformers, a four to one transformer. So that'll be mounted over here. And then we're going to have a QRP labs uh, a filter here at for 40 meters. And then we're going to use, just pull it out of its storage here, somewhere in, among the wreckage of my shack slash office slash wherever I am. Okay, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm not even going to cut this because I want you to have this organized I really am. Lest you think I have it all together. I don't. Okay, it really is around here somewhere, I swear, but it is a uh, QRP Labs. Um, what the heck is that thing? That's going to bug me. There it is. Right where I'd stored it safely. <laughs> Best place for it. So this is a QRP Labs 10 watt HF linear PA. And it's not very big. Got a big old heat sink for it, though. And this is a basically indestructible PA uh, for HF, and it can do 10 watts for days on end without with some with a dead short or an open connection or no antenna, whatever. Um, so I love the idea of an indestructible PA. And this thing just uses the IRF 510. People say the IRF 510 is not a good, you know, not good or anything. Uh, quite frankly, it's the designs using the IRF 510 that have issues, but this one is really well engineered and tested uh, destructively and uh, has passed many tests. So can't wait to use this and put it to, put it to good use. And that's going to connect somewhere in here. And then this I'm hoping to use as the preamp for this. This, does, this is a two-stage amplifier and it does require a preamp for it, the third stage. So I should talk to Hans about that, make sure it would work for this application, and he helped me out. So thank you, Hans. 
So the first thing I've got to do is, well, the first thing I'm going to do is replace the crystal filter. And the crystal filter, I've got, for that purpose, I've got uh, 100 11.0592 crystals that I bought on Amazon for like $8, I think. Uh, it took three or four months to get here, so that put this project way behind. Um, in fact, kind of funny story, I, I checked the order and I'm like, man, this, is, this has just been too long. It might have been two months, but it was just way too long. The, the, the projected delivery date was a month before and they just never showed up. So I filed a dispute with Amazon and got my money back the next day they showed up. So uh, now I, I did reverse the refund and, and I, I emailed them and let them, you know, contacted the seller and let them know that they did in fact, in fact arrive. But if I'd waited one more day, right? So speaking of ZL2 CTM or Charlie ZL2 CTM, he, he has an awesome YouTube channel and he's, he considers himself kind of like a backyard mechanic when it comes to uh, RF design, but he's really experienced and he has a good methodology that I really admire. And uh, in fact, um, my friend Robin, uh, she uh, uh, pointed me at him quite some time ago for another project. So what he had here is a little crystal oscillator and that's what I'm going to make is this little crystal oscillator. He's got NPN transistor, 100k ohm, or <laughs> NPN transistor, 100k ohm, and uh, 1k ohm resistor, a TIE fighter, I mean crystal oscillator or crystal here. And then we have the uh, 20 picofarad and 100 nanofarad right here. And then the signal comes out here. So I'll just put a little, little wire on it just to make it turn it into an itsy bitsy transmitter. And then we're going to use that to determine what the frequency of these are. And the goal is I need four of these that are uh, within roughly 50 hertz of each other. So about 50 hertz-ish. And that will give us what we want. And I don't really have the means to test the filter and check its bandwidth and check see what the skirts look like and all that stuff. We're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants. And if we really wanted to fly by the seat of our pants, I would just take four filter or four crystals out of these and use them. But I have seen reports that so, of somebody who purchased a uh, hundred and fifty of them were bad. So I also want to make sure they work because that would really stink to do all that work and then it just doesn't work and I don't know why. So we're going to do that. I'm going to build this and I'm going to build it with a little socket so that I can uh, just plug in a new one. Um, you know, plug them in and then write down its value and set them in the, on the line or whatever. This does require three volts. I don't have a three volt power supply, but I do have a grip of batteries. So uh, I didn't have a battery holder, but I just put together uh, this little battery here, battery pack, and it tests just over three volts. Um, and if anybody's wondering, I have several hundred, probably, probably a couple hundred of these double A's. They're slightly used. Uh, they were used in a medical pump but um, they're single use in the medical pump, but they still have a lot of juice left. They, they don't have enough juice to run the medical pump twice. Um, well, they might, but they actually just tell you to throw them away. So uh, instead I saved them. So um, I've got probably a couple hundred of them. So that's why I do this. Yes, I know this shortens the life of them. Guess what? Don't care, I got lots of them. So that's that. I'm going to build this circuit. I'm pretty sure I just made one of my parts go flying when I threw that. So I'm going <laughs> to go see if I did that. And I'm going to build this circuit. I'll come back and we'll see if we can't make it work. Okay, so we're back. We've got this circuit breadboarded. I actually tried building it on this perf board here and I screwed something up. I don't know what. Yeah, this is just some light, some light here. Uh, I, I, you know, when you start getting underneath it and everything, uh, my brain goes haywire. So I just threw it on a breadboard and it works fine. <laughs> uh, how do I know it works? Well, that's easy because when I power it up, you can hear it. So um, first off, let's disconnect the power here and then we'll turn on the receiver. Now this is an 11.0592. So on upper side band and pardon the mess here, it's just a disaster area. Uh, on the upper side band, I should be able to hear it at 11.05.82 or 8.0. And so what we'll do is just plug in, plug in the power 
and you can quite clearly hear it. And I can zero beat it right there, but I don't want to zero beat it. So what I'm going to do is I want to be able to hear it. And the reason I want to be able to hear it, because this is a program called or an app, we call them apps these days because it's, you know, 2022 or 2021 or whatever year it is, it's the 2020s is what I was trying to say. Uh, you can see it sees my voice when I talk, when I make a noise, it shows it on the spectrum. And it shows me the frequency, uh, the audio frequency. So about 450, 4, 1450 hertz. So if I turn up this noise here, you can see the spike quite clearly. And that's 16, let's see here. 1664 hertz and i'm at 11057 so 11057 so 057.00 plus 16 what did i say it was 1664 uh let's see we do some math and that's Seventy-three sixty-four. That's not right. Hang on. Oh, it's I'm I'm a decimal point over. This is why I'm bad at math. So if we do uh, eleven point oh five seven point oh oh plus one six six four, we get five eight point six six four. So this is supposed to be eleven point oh five nine two. Um, so it's not exactly right, you know? So it's 11057, 11058664. Yeah, that, that's right. Okay, so uh, it doesn't matter that they're not quite exactly right, that the frequency isn't exactly right. I'm going, all I'm going for is um, relative are they relative to each other. So all I've got to do, I'll get these out of here. These are just some testing ones. They're some old pixies at 7023 or 7023 uh, kilohertz. So I've just got to go through this bag and, oh, look, I just unloaded some of them for myself. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, cool. And uh, go through this bag and sort them. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back and let you know what I find. All right, so I've spent the last, I don't know, half an hour or more um, working on sorting some uh, crystals. And I've got quite a spread here, the lowest being 1430, 1430, love 1453. But I got I got some that match exactly. I got four that are 1523 hertz. And mind you, this is above and beyond my base uh, of 11057. So this would be 11058. 523 and this one will be 11058969 so they're all just the you know one kilohertz plus there's one over here that's 2.8 you know 2800 2083 down here so that one's way out there um, i didn't test them all you can see there's so much left over because i think i've got a pretty good spread here um so i was just looking at a paper by w7zui wes hayward um guy who co-wrote emfrd and um uh, you know, we all look up to him as being kind of the, the master of these things. And uh, his uh, paper on, uh, it's on his website, I'll link it below, um, said that for a 2 kilohertz uh, SSB filter, uh, you want a 200, 200 hertz spread. So about 10% um, uh, of your bandwidth. And I, I've read this somewhere else, I just couldn't find it. So I had to go look again and I found it on Wes's site. Um, so if I want roughly a 2.7 kilohertz, uh, sideband filter, which I think is what's in there now. I'm not entirely certain, but, um, so if I'm starting with these three here 
Uh, these are uh, 1465. So 1465 plus 270. That's uh, 0, 3, uh, 7. So 1730. So I took a couple of these 1465s and a couple of these 1734s. I think that would work. But I've never done this before. And so I want your input. Uh, please let me know what you think. Will 2 at 1465 and 2 at 1734 work for a filter? Or should I just grab one of these and one of these and any of two in between? So um, please let me know what you think. I am very, very curious what your uh, ideas are on this. Uh, and by the way, here's the, the little circuit that I did end up using. I, it's the same one I showed a moment ago. The only difference is, is I uh, put a, this in the the antenna. I just terminated it down here so that it would stick up real well because it was just flopping down. And the other thing is I moved the crystal over here so it would be quick to, uh, easy to you know, pop in a new one and test it. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm sorry if this is a little bit on the long side. Um, but I wanted to document this and show you the process I'm using and ask for your help. So I will look forward to see uh, what you have to say in the comments. And uh, again, thanks for watching. 73, we'll see you next time.